Near the end of World War II, air forces from both sides quickly realized that propeller-driven aircraft had reached the end of the road in terms of pure speed, which started a new arms race for jet fighters. Early designs often had flaws because this was a new technology that was trying to break the sound barrier without knowing how engines and airframes would respond to higher speeds and more stress. Mistakes would be made, and designs would not live up to expectations. Some of these have happened more recently than you might think. In this video, we've selected the 10 worst fighter jets ever made. Number 10. The BAE Lightning Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, Britain's fast reaction interceptor, the BAE Lightning, was a full-fledged indigenous product capable of over 1,500 miles per hour performance. In contrast to the other fast jet designs, BAE used an unusual twin-stacked engine configuration fed by a single big front air inlet. The Lightning's incredible 20,000 feet per minute rate of rise, topping out at altitudes exceeding 60,000 feet, was by far the most astounding display of power. All that power and performance came at a cost, with limited internal fuel and a battle radius of only 150 miles. Later, the BAE Lightning variants with their obnoxious overwing tanks sacrificed performance for range with top speeds dropping to 1,000 miles per hour. At number 9, the Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet In desperate need of a rapid air defense fighter, Germany debuted the Me-163 Comet, a step forward but not yet a jet fighter. Instead of a jet engine, which was still two years away, Messerschmitt equipped the Comet with a Walter HWK-109 rocket motor, giving pilots a possible top speed of 650 miles per hour before climbing to their operational height and gliding back to land. Highly corrosive hydrogen peroxide and methanol hydrazine would melt flesh on contact, making the ME-163 a deadly place to be. At number 8, the Yakovlev Yak-38 If you look closely, you can see how the Harrier influenced the Yak-38. However, unlike the West, Yakovlev's engineers never got quite as far as the West. Some of the Yak-38's problems are because it was rushed into service. Even though it was faster than the Harrier, it had less appeal because it had less range than the Harrier. Also, it was notoriously hard for new pilots to fly. Yakovlev used a twin-engine design so that the plane could go faster than the speed of sound. However, this caused more problems than it solved, since if one engine failed, the plane would usually be lost. Number 7. The Convair F-102 Delta Dagger the United States Air Force wanted a new all-weather, high-altitude supersonic fighter at the height of the Cold War, with rising claims of Soviet long-range aircraft launched nuclear weaponry. What they first obtained fell far short of the requirement, barely capable of reaching Mach 1. Convair believed the F-102's pure delta wing configuration best matched the United States Air Force's high-performance needs at the time, however, the F-102 was troubled by a new phenomenon, known as transonic drag, despite the J-57 engine early prototypes couldn't surpass Mach 1. Number 6. The Heinkel HE-162 Germany started making the Heinkel HE-162 in 1943 because it was running out of combat planes. It is often called the People's Fighter because most of the work on it would be done by ordinary people. The HE-162 was mostly made of wood and used parts from other planes. It was a simple design with a single BMW 003 turbojet and could go over 550 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest planes of World War II. The simple wood and glue construction turned out to be a fatal flaw as the glue often corroded the airframe of the HE-162 and caused it to crash. Number 5. The Vought F-7U Cutlass The F-7U was made for the US Navy, but it's hard to imagine how Vought thought carrier deployments would go. Unlike the sleek jet fighters of other countries, the F-7U Cutlass had a strangely raised nose. This was because its landing gear was so complicated and unreliable that it often broke when it landed on a carrier deck. By far, the biggest problem with Vought's F-7U was how often it broke down. The control surfaces often got stuck, and the Westinghouse J-46 engines just didn't have enough power or reliability. Number 4. The Bell P-59 Aero Comet 
Jets are supposed to be fast, right? If you look more closely at the USAF's first operational jet fighter, the Bell P-59, you might change your mind. With a top speed of only 413 miles per hour, it couldn't keep up with piston-engine planes. All things considered, the basic design wasn't bad. The General Electric J31 engine, which was mostly based on a British engine but didn't have enough power, was the only problem. Failure to meet the performance needs of the U.S. military would have a big effect on production numbers. The U.S. Army, for example, cancelled more than half of their allotment because of this. At number 3, the de Havilland C Vixen Even though the much better F-4 Phantom was needed, the Royal Navy kept using the strange Sea Vixen as its fixed-wing carrier-based aircraft until 1972. This was despite the fact that the F-4 Phantom was needed. A strange twin-boom, twin-engine plane with an off-center cockpit for the pilot, which can only make it harder to fly. This type is known for being hard to control. Starting in 1951, 145 Sea Vixens were made. During that time, 55 were lost due to accidents instead of being destroyed in battle. Number 2. The Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-23 Mikoyan Gurevich, the world's fastest combat aircraft, gave us the deadly MiG-25 Foxbat, only to follow it up three years later with the cheap design, the MiG-23 Flogger. The MiG-23 Flogger, which first flew in 1967, immediately became a major seller for the Mikoyan Gurevich, finding homes with over 30 foreign operators. Its revolutionary variable geometry wing structure offered the best low-speed stability as well as high-speed performance over 1,500 miles per hour. The MiG-23 was one of the least reliable and labor-intensive fighters of the Cold War era due to its high price, low quality build, and strength. Number 1. The Lockheed F-35 Lightning II It is without a doubt the most advanced plane ever to fly, combining and taking over the roles of several other planes in the process. Because of these high operational needs, the F-35's budget and development time have gone over. Worse was yet to come. The F-35 program was built as the most advanced and capable fighter in the world, so it was a surprise when high-ranking USAF chiefs called it a failure because it was too complicated and expensive. With this, the buzz is signing off for today. Happy holidays, guys. Bye-bye.